This is the one with the accordion front. I forgot what those are called. Is that is that what you want? Give me a brand or name, something I can reference so I can um, draw one of those for you guys. Yeah, he'll be joining in about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna keep this sketch tight and quick and probably have to chat with him here and there, but I can hang and chat with you guys too. You know me, I'm good to draw and talk at the same time. You know, and if you don't know, now you do. And if you know now, I hope you subscribe because I'm not stopping, I'm having fun. Yeah, he should be on soon. All right, in the meantime, I'm gonna just Google some, I'm just gonna Google some old cameras. I'm not sure what kind, but old camera. Let's see, like, do you mean like a, oh, what's up, Saulito? All right, so let's do just some sort of antique camera, I guess. Kick things off. Oops. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, this is gonna be technical and tough, but it's a good opportunity to do like a gray marker sketch. Let's do that. Oh, check out the Discord. Okay, I am checking now, Tom. Let's see. Oh, that kind, SLR. All right, that's easy. I don't even have to really look at those. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is start the um, body. And I'll, I'll just map, or map that out with this gray marker here. Um, rectangular proportion, like so, and over. So I have this box wireframe. And that's just the general proportion of things. So on this side, typically you have your grip, right? So extend that grip out. And now I need to find, actually it's the center of this, this <laughs> portion. Right about there is where my lens will be. So let's draw some lines down like so, ellipse, and then this can become my lens mount. Now above the lens mount, typically you have, if it's an SLR, there's prism, all that stuff. Um, mirrorless cameras nowadays, you do get, you know, a pop-up flash of some sort. So I can block this in like so. And then we have our dial controls, our shutter, and another dial typically, um, maybe some mount for a strap of some kind just to kind of help out and show an accessory here. Sketching a strap and the lens. So for the lens, you just want to follow the perspective. Now this ellipse is going to be smaller than one of our ellipses out front here. And you're going to have a series of ellipses, focus rings, all of that stuff. If you're looking at a real camera lens, great. Then you're able to um, put things where they need to be. I'm just kind of fudging it, so let's see. All right, that looks good. All right, so pick an axis. That axis just needs to contain all the ellipses. If it's helpful, rotate the page. And as you move, so if the lens were sticking out this far, you might have a skinnier ellipse, right? All right, <clears throat> so from here, which is enough for me to have the perspective, I can just jump to a pen and start scribbling. So I got 10 minutes, right? You know, I'm like, oh shoot, I gotta capture this idea for this meeting. So because I already figured out the perspective here, I can just sketch quickly. Again, look at how I'm holding, holding the pen, right? Further up the barrel. Chad is asking who owns the artwork when I design for a client. Um, it depends. For me, I usually assume that they they have purchased rights to my work. I haven't had any issues with um, clients not wanting me to be able to um, post work, you know, in a portfolio. 
given enough time passing and all of that. Like you don't want to <laughs> do work for clients and then, um, you know, prematurely post something that wouldn't be good. A little bit of an eye cup here. I mean, if it's, if it's artwork, yeah, like, um, what do you call it? Like illustration type stuff. I usually just assume they're paying for the rights to use that. I have, I was telling a story to someone yesterday. Oh, it was, uh, I wonder if he's watching. Roshan, my man Roshan. Also, yeah, shout out to Roshan. He made a donation this week. Um, if you feel so inclined, you can always do that. Links are on the video frame. But I was telling him a story about this project I got. It was the highest paid project I've ever had. <laughs> and they paid me enough that I was fine with whatever request they had. They were like, you can't share this with anyone. I was like, okay. <laughs> so if the compensation's there, I'm totally fine with... Uh, you know, quote unquote, selling those rights. And in this case, yeah, it's totally fine with me. So yeah, a series of ellipses are always hard, challenging to do. I get it, we all hate it, but with enough practice, you figure out ways to make it work for yourself. Put the brand on the front. Yeah, something like that. Maybe some more text here. Texture dots. These these uh, camera bodies are always textured so you can, you know, grip it. Maybe a couple other buttons up here. And the lens itself, I'm cheating. Usually you have like focus limiter controls on the other side, but I'm cheating here. So we'll just sketch that in. I was thinking about getting a new camera. So I shoot with a Nikon D800. Which is fine, it's not a necessity, but you know. Shiny new things. So right here, point of articulation for the for the flash if it needs to pop up, right? You can do an arrow, label that if I need to. Probably even better would be putting a vignette of what that looks like on the side. And now I'm just gonna shade the lens, add a little bit of an artifact, just fill this in. Like so. Focus ring. You know, if this is something you're gonna grip, you want some texture. This ellipse is not great on the outside. I keep trying to cheat it, but I feel like you guys are gonna notice it anyways. This needs to round more toward the bottom. So here where I normally have a shadow core on my focus ring, I'm just gonna shade this in put the lines a lot closer to each other. And then as I move around here, just gently, gradually increase the distance. Still drawing with my elbow and my shoulder. And then increase or decrease rather the distance between those lines. Increase again. And so I've created a texture, but also use that to suggest the lighting situation in the scene. <clears throat> 
Um, let's see, what am I missing on the grip? Uh, okay, shutter. Shutter is at a weird position. This should probably be angle, angled down a little bit. Um, I mean, I could cut back, shape it, whatnot. Oh, it's a little door. Could do a part line here. You know, if we wanna show, <laughs> show it actually working, we can just sketch above and then show, hey, these are our memory card slots in here. You want to show a memory card. Because if you're not illustrating, you should be telling some sort of story with what you're doing. So SD card, maybe a little arrow. There's our door. All right, so in about, let's see, three minutes here, I'm gonna call my buddy Saul. This is good, this is gonna be good. It's gonna be free form. You guys can ask questions as we talk and we'll, I'll, I'll kind of moderate and he'll answer those. But I, I, you guys are always asking about the profession. So I thought, what better way than getting real people who do real things to answer real questions for you guys? Not that I don't do real things, but I feel like I talk a lot. You're always seeing me, so just mixing it up. All right, a little bit on the inside of the lens here for surface definition, shadows where we need them, all that good stuff. Thicken the line weight on the bottom. If you're doing a black and white drawing and it's just black and white, and you're rely relying rather on your lines, you have to be really just confident and bold with those lines where it's appropriate. The crisp color kind of helps, but Yeah, these ellipses are a little bit off, but um, a little practice there. Thank you, Chad, much appreciated. <laughs> Always coming through. But yeah, I hope you enjoy the exploded view, man. And I hope this, uh, this kind of helped you see how it's done. Chad, specifically. <laughs> Going from, you know, our initial sketch to kind of this, what's this, three, four, five, six part sketch. All right, so I'm going to switch over here. There's my camera. You know, you can add little doodads, things, uh, maybe a lens release button, for example, if I want to label that. Lens release. All right, let me switch over here. EOS RP, dang, <laughs> dang, those are good, man. Those are really good. Those are really, really, really good. I'm jealous, legit. I I was looking at the Nikon Z6 because I have a, you know, like I said, the D800 and I wasn't quite sure. Um, let's see here, okay. 